The Apollo missions weren't just about the space race. They were also the most ambitious geological field trips of all time. A key aim was to discover if volcanoes had helped create the moon. And if so, were any still active? Before the Apollo program, we didn't even know whether the moon had volcanism. For example, some people thought it was a coal moon. Some people thought it was a warm moon, which had heating inside and volcanism. So this is a big question. Was it even volcanic rock? 2,000 feet, 2,000 feet, into the ag, 47 degrees. Roger. These dark-looking planes of the moon were particularly tantalizing to scientists. They're called the seas, or the maria. To find out exactly what they were, the first Apollo landing was to Mare Tranquillitatis, the Sea of Tranquility. Okay, ready for me to come out? All set. As the astronauts explored the dusty and rocky surface, they recognized basalt, the most common volcanic rock found on Earth. And lots of it. When you erupt molten rock on the moon, liquid rock on the moon, uh, it actually is one-sixth gravity, so it's much less gravity than we see on the Earth. It's like a collection of just about every variety of rock you could uh, find. If the lava uh, is coming up from great depths, uh, given the gravity, etc., uh, you'll get a lot of lava coming out, commonly much more than you see on the Earth, and so it flows great distances. And so we have lava flows that go over a thousand kilometers. Uh, we, like incredible, okay, we'll go halfway across the United States, no problem. Another mysterious feature found on the moon was these winding canyons, or sinuous rills. These channels were up to 400 meters deep and over 100 kilometers long. Clues as to what created them can be found back on Earth. Under the southwest of Iceland are curious tunnels through solid rock. They appear almost man-made. Gro Peterson is exploring one. In the depths of the tunnel, she hopes to find evidence of what used to flow through it. You can actually see how the lava has been running along the wall here. And you can see also that it was very hot in here because some of this lava remelted and basically was dribbling down the wall. You see that here. It's a lava tube, and long ago, lava was surging through these tunnels. One of the way, very exciting things people found on the moon was these sinuous rills. And of course, before people actually had been on the moon, they were thought to potentially be water eroded. Um, but then people have gone to the moon and it has been studied much more and they found out that these, these sinuous rills were always connected with the maria, the, the moon lavas that we have up there. Perhaps these sinuous rills were once enclosed lava tubes. So one of the things that you see here, obviously, is that we have what we call skylights. So the roof has collapsed. If all of the roof collapses, you will be end up with a valley like something you see on the moon. But you can also see the tubes on the moon by a string of skylights, just as we see here, one hole after the other, and you just follow them, you trace them down, and you can see that these are within lava flows. But when did these eruptions take place? And why did they eventually stop? The answer would come in small bags of volcanic rocks brought home by the astronauts. On Earth, they could be accurately dated. So when the moon rocks were brought back, it's like unbelievable. OK, this we can tell four billion year old rocks. This is the keys to the understanding of the solar system. Like other planetary bodies made of rock, the moon was a mass of hot molten magma as it was forming. It's an amazing thought that you could have been standing on Earth and looked up on the moon and see these massive eruptions happening. 
but all the time it was cooling. Being relatively small, a quarter the diameter of the Earth, the moon cooled down quickly. By three billion years ago, almost all the lava and interior magma had solidified into one big lump of cold rock. No more volcanoes. 